Hi there, I'm Carrie Dunn. I'm a history teacher and department head in Massachusetts who's currently stuck at home um, in the age of coronavirus and um, doing a little more gardening than I've done in a few years as a result. So I thought I'd do a monthly garden update and here starts. Uh, today is March 31st, last day of March. It's been rainy and cold, but today we've got a sunny day and it's approaching 50 degrees, so it's really nice out. So I'll take you a little tour of our garden and we'll see how things develop next month when we come back. So we've got a lot of perennial beds out front that we put in when we moved into our house. You know, you can see our house is a small 1,300 square foot ranch house built in 1961. Our neighbors are older people mostly who like living in ranch houses because they can stay in them forever. But the people we bought the house from um, they weren't big gardeners, so there was just grass and really not much else. So we put in a whole bunch of perennials and shrubs to make it look a little more appealing and uh, like cut flowers, so a lot of things that bloom. Um, they're just starting to come up now. You know, we definitely have some bulbs coming up, some daffodils, right? Um, I've got some flowering quince, never plant that. It's basically invasive and really thorny and you can't kill it no matter what you do, right? Um, rose bush coming back to life. Some nice uh, blooming hardy hydrangeas. We've got more blue hydrangeas, rhododendrons, azalea, right? Um, We've got our first Siberian irises starting to come up. You can see little little green sprouts right in there. Right. Um, bleeding hearts starting to make an appearance as well. So that's exciting. No sign of the hostas yet. They'll be coming. The deer like to come and eat them as soon as they pop up, and unfortunately. All right, definitely we've got some Daffodils in good shape, more azalea. Got some nice sedums coming up, making an appearance. Daylilies, deer have already been nibbling on those. All right, um, some other shrubs. Um, we've got a red Japanese maple here that we put in. Um, and then we have a Chinese dogwood tree. So I guess we've got some Asian themed trees that we put in the front yard. So now I'm going to walk us around to the backyard and this is a weeping cherry uh, that we put in when we moved in. It's actually gotten really big and really developed really fast. So walking around to the backyard. So we have a small house but a big yard so the yard's almost half an acre and we back up against swamp which has limited some of the things we can grow. We really can't grow tomatoes very well because the air in the soil is just too moist, but other things do really well. So one thing that we found actually does very, very well are fruits, all right? And we like to eat fruits and they're kind of expensive to buy. So we've got an Asian pear tree here. Last year, I'd say it produced about 50 Asian pears, even though it's a very small tree. This is our biggest success of our garden thus far. We have a red pear tree. Uh, it's not much to look at, it kind of lists the side and it's pretty ugly until um, it produces pears and it produced over 100 pears last year and only its third year. Uh, this is Lucy. Lucy's very helpful for keeping varmints out of the yard. Um, we definitely have a lot of critters, squirrels, chipmunks, you know, raccoons, all sorts of things that would come mess with our, our gardens. Uh, my husband put in a grape arbor, right? So the grapevines have been doing really well. We d it does produce a couple different varieties of grape. Uh, they tend to get a little mildewy, so we haven't really been able to eat many of the grapes. But hopefully in the years to come, we'll be able to do more of that. Uh, we have an apple tree in our backyard that we planted. Um, Produced about 100 apples last year, so we were quite happy with that. Um, this is uh, some netting projects that we're working on. They're not quite done yet, but we'll put them on top of some of our crops once we need to to keep pests out. Uh, this tangled brush here is actually pretty cool. 
Um, they're blackberries and they're thornless, so you can get right in there without getting pricked by thorns. And you know, when they're ripe, the blackberries are huge. So like five blackberries would absolutely fill up my hand. Um, they're really delicious as well. So the blackberries have been a big success for us. Um, we have a few different blueberry groves. So this is one little grove of blueberry bushes. Our blueberries grow really, really well. The only challenge is keeping the birds and the chipmunks out of them so that there's some blueberries left for us. This is a new venture we're pretty excited about. So we're trying some new, they look just like sticks planted in the ground. We're trying some new fruits that people don't typically grow in this area. We ordered them from a grower online. So bush cherries and June berries, um, both of which produce edible fruit and should grow well in this area, but we'll see, time will tell. Um, so we've just put those in, kind of a big experiment. We've got a grove of black raspberries here um, that we dug up out of a wild patch of them that's been growing for years at my mother's yard. Um, put in a second green pear tree here. Um, we'll see if it produces its first pears this year. All right, um, this is a bed that, kind of whimsical. Um, I, on a whim, bought like a $5 fig tree at the end of the season um, that was on sale outside of a grocery store. It looked kind of sad. And I've been growing it in a pot for years and it clearly wasn't happy. So I've replanted it into this bed here and we'll see if it takes the ground. If it does, then I'll have to cover it up every winter because fig trees are right on the edge of being weather hardy in New England. Um, so I'd have to support it and, and cover it every winter for it to survive. And then around it, um, I've actually planted throughout other parts of this bed a bunch of seed potatoes, which are just potatoes from the grocery store that had sprouted. And I know those are not technically the seed potatoes farmers like to buy. I've definitely bought those in the past, but um, this year I figured I had a bag of sprouted potatoes and I was just going to throw them in the ground and see what happened. Uh, this is actually quite exciting, this tree here. It's the first thing to really bloom in our yard this year. It's very pretty. I'll walk around so you can admire it. So our favorite local garden store, River's Edge, was closing for the season and they had a lot of things on 75% off clearance. So I picked up this beautiful little teeny tree for $19 right before they closed and it's an apricot tree. And I had never heard of apricots growing in Massachusetts or New England, but I figured for $19 I'd give it a shot. I don't know if I'll ever produce any apricots, but in the meantime, I'm fairly delighted that it's actually survived the winter and is blooming. It's very pretty. All right, over here, this looks like nothing, but this is gonna be our first major harvest. So this is an asparagus bed, and we just planted the tubers like six years ago, and uh, the asparagus comes back um, every year, and uh, get probably equivalent of not that much, but maybe like, three, four bunches of asparagus um, would be about what we'd harvest each year. All right. I also had some cilantro seeds, so I threw those down in the ground right there, and we'll see what happens with those. Um, this is another garden. So we used to do more vegetables. Um, we actually have another garden plot that we get at a community garden and a church nearby, um, which is better for growing zucchini and tomatoes. Um, so we don't do those in our yard anymore because the air and soil is just too wet for them to thrive. So so I've got more blueberries in here, um, some chives that come back every year, um, a few perennials that attract bees and butterflies. Um, you can see I've got a lot of fencing in here. So I've put an early crop of sweet peas in the ground and hopefully in a couple weeks, you know, we'll see those starting to grow. Um, I also have three current plants in here. They're kind of thorny. I know they're alive because they've got little buds on them. All right, so I planted those last fall and I was happy to see them still alive. Um, we'll see if they actually produce any currants this year. And then I've got one of my two rhubarb plants here and that's our first kind of spring plant that's already thriving. We have a large patch of red raspberries along here. Someday, maybe, maybe this will be the year since we're home so much, we'll stake those. Got some nice mature blueberry plants that produce a lot of blueberries here along our, our front fence. Again, the trick is fencing. Uh, we do have a rain barrel that we use 
to water our blueberries and raspberries so we don't have to use garden hose water, which is expensive in Framingham. And uh, more blueberries. And then we've got another bed here. Um, I've got two peach trees. So there's one. And another little guy over here. Um, and eventually I probably won't be able to plant anything in there, but the peach trees are still small. So I've got a few things going on. I've temporarily put up more uh, fencing or trellises and planted some sweet peas. So we'll see if those come up. I've got a rhubarb plant coming up, right? So that'll come up every year. And then I randomly threw down some carrot seeds. Um, so we'll see how, how those go, all right? Um, plus I've got three more current plants in here as well. Here's one. And uh, thankfully, again, they all seem to have survived the winter and are, I hope, um, doing pretty well. So we're up on our porch now, so you can see some of the plantings we've got going, all right? So I've started some early seeds. Um, <laughs> impulse by a couple weeks ago, I did my last trip to an actual store before the quarantine hit and uh, went to Target and just bought seeds off the rack there. Usually I'd order things from a fancier source, but I was kind of limited to what was happened to be on the rack at Target. So I've got an early crop going and I'll add more pots and seeds as the temperatures get a little warmer. Um, this is an enclosed porch, so um, it does get warm during the day. It cools down at night, but we can move stuff inside if we have to. So I mainly have herbs going right now. So I've got some basil, dill, um, oregano, and chives here. And a few sunflowers too. And then over here, I've just got a little auxiliary area um, with some zinnias going. Um, really like zinnias. They're beautiful cut flowers and they attract lots of pollinators. So, so uh, we'll be back with more pots uh, next month and we'll see, hopefully some of these things will have sprouted by then.